I would like to talk to you about the top exercises for every body part. It's not what you might think. So the first and foremost thing to consider is not every one is the same. That uh, you might have different goals than someone else. So like my goal right now is to eat this gummy bear. I succeeded. I just lifted. That's why I'm eating gummy bears. But this isn't about gummy bears. That's an entirely different topic for a different lecture. For over 10 years, I had this old school mentality that men used barbells and that power building was the way to go to put on mass. And that's true as a beginner, that heavy compound movements of five to 10 reps with barbells are the way to go for like back squat, which is like conventional deadlift, bench press, pull-ups, barbell bent row or T-bar row. Those are your compound best exercises to build a foundation. If you do a five by five routine or a four by eight routine and you hit those core exercises, like even if you did total body three times a week, I don't know if you could handle total body with just those exercises, but not doing isolation movements, just working on core barbell movements is how you build a foundation. And you do that when you're young. Then intermediate is when you're incorporating some more stuff like cables and isolation moves with dumbbells and machines in the 10 to 20 rep range, right? And that's pretty much the extent of it. And then in theory, once you're at the point to where they say it's because you're older or because you're advanced, the simple point of it is once you get to a certain age, the risk versus reward for lifting under 10 reps is minimal. I mean, it is too great that your joints are more brittle and the loads you'd be using by that age are so high that it's even worse. And that you'd be so fatigued for handling that much weight for multiple sets, you're relegated if you're going to be using these core compound movements to one set or so. In which case, since volume is what grows tissue, volume begets hypertrophy, not necessarily load alone. Doing one set of barbell row is about as fatiguing as doing like three sets of chest supported row. One set of T-bar row is as fatiguing as four or five sets of chest supported T-bar row. So you could use, in theory, the same weight doing a similar exercise with the chest support and get more out of it for your back for hypertrophy purposes. So that's why I always was confused as to why all the best pro bodybuilders are doing nothing but machine, cable, and dumbbell lifts, and ne they never touch the barbell stuff. And it's because at the point that you've developed your base to grow, just slapping on muscle at random doesn't necessarily get you a better physique. It just gets you a bigger physique. That size is a means to accomplish a goal of symmetry or aesthetics. You don't want size at the expense of symmetry or aesthetics. That bigger isn't necessarily better. Better is better. Bigger may be better. Bigger may be worse. So that's why, in take two. So in theory, doing, in the beginning of your career, putting on as much mass as possible using heavy barbell movements because you're an easy responder, you respond to low weights, you respond to low, low um, volumes. But by the time that you're so strong, your bent row isn't 100 pounds, it's 400 pounds. And you don't grow from two sets, you need four sets. Well, that means two sets of 200 pounds for 10 reps, for five reps each is 10, it's 4,000 pounds. Four sets of 400 pounds for 10 reps each is 
16,000 pounds. Maybe the muscles can handle that and you need more than that to grow, but that doesn't make it easier on your total metabolism. That it's 16,000 pounds versus 4,000 pounds. Whereas if you were to use and half the weight is redistributed through your lower back, your glutes, your hamstrings, your calves, your quads to support your the body. Your body has to hold that extra 400 pounds out in front of you for the full duration of the set. Supporting your chest would uh, mitigate that. Same thing would go for like something like the bench press. Like obviously the bench press is not safe. The incline bench press is better. Incline bench press and the Smith press allows you to handle heavy loads without having the risk of this type of motion, this type of motion, this type of motion, this type of motion, or this type of motion, this type of, I might have done that already. But there's three different planes that you could fuck up in with free weights there's zero planes you can fuck up with in the Smith. So you're able to grind it out. And if you get stuck at the bottom, you just rack it. It's so much easier to use a machine to accomplish the same goal once it gets significantly heavy. Like if you're lifting less than your body weight, fuck it, go ahead, use free weights. If you're lifting two or three times your body weight on the squat, two or three times your body weight on the deadlift, up to double your body weight on the bench press, Nobody can spot that. I mean, this it's a fucking nightmare. And how do you track progress when you have a different spotter every week? The amount of force that they, they have to bring the bar out to you, it's like 600, you know, 300 pounds. You might be like here when you start. You could be here when you start. The bar could start here and you have to wiggle into position. It's just stupid for tracking progress to use free weights when you have that much weight. So as a beginner... You don't even need three exercises per body part. You need one exercise per body part. And I would say the best thing you could do for your back is pull-ups and bent rows. Yeah, we're what? Nine minutes into the fucking video and I'm finally getting the point. So the best thing you can do for your back is pull-ups and bent rows. Maybe T-bar rows if you feel in your lower lats better. All right? You don't necessarily want a chest support because you want to grow everywhere. Right? You might do... The best thing for your chest would be either flat, I would say incline barbell press because it's a lot safer than flat bench. I would just never waste my time with flat bench. Unless you're going to compete in powerlifting, flat benching is stupid. That's my personal opinion. Not everyone will agree with that. If you need more triceps, you can bring in your hands a little closer. If you need more wide chest, you can go out wider. If you need more shoulders, do a 60 degree incline. If you need more lower pecs, do a 15 degree incline. But you're always going 15, 30, 45, or 60 degree incline, hitting different parts of your chest. You can go closer, not close, but closer for triceps, and you could go wider for wide upper chest. I mean, for outer chest. You can come up higher for guillotine, press to get the upper sternal fibers and then you could come lower but paradoxically to hit more clavicular fibers that's pretty much it like that's your chest movement um of course there's a value to doing cable crossovers because you can work the inner chest portion but you could also do diamond push-ups at the end of your final set you know you could do all your sets of bench roll off the bench onto the floor and do diamond push-ups to get to finish off the triceps and the upper chest. For triceps, again, heavy compounds, so I'd say doing dips, and then don't wait with a belt that's a pain in the ass. Just put chains around your neck. It pitches you forward, it gets a little bit more chest that way. Um, I happen to like that more. Doing this type of grip to get a little bit more chest, and the triceps end up engaging more because you're using more weight. So the lower percentage of the weight goes to the triceps, but the to greater total weight, so the absolute value of the load on the triceps may be better, plus you get inner chest a little bit. That's my favorite um, for triceps or diamond push-ups after the dips. I'm a big fan of the diamond push-ups to get the inner chest and the triceps. Um, for beginners, and that doesn't mean no one, You can, doesn't mean, uh, I'll get to the caveat to that in a minute. For delts, I'm going to say lateral raises. I like cable lateral raises um, over military press. It's complicated of an answer, just that's, I'm going to keep it simple. 
cable ladder races. If you want to see the video, I've got it on my YouTube channel, Apex Coaching um, is the YouTube channel. And you, if you Google Apex Coaching Todd Lee or Apex Coaching Todd and Karina, whatever, that'll pull it up easier. If you just Google Apex Coaching, you're going to get something for a video game called Apex. I don't know, Apex Legends. Um, as far as biceps, I like Preacher dumbbell curls one arm at a time if that's a little too technical just dumbbell curls not alternating that's retarded just dumbbell curls or preacher dumbbell if your arms at rest see how at rest my arms don't hang straight down if your arms happen to hang straight down at rest and you can supinate fully then straight barbell curls are the best thing for people who can't supinate fully but your arms straight down easy bar curls if you're like me and your arms literally hang out at your sides you're probably not a beginner but if you were then i would say you have to lean over to get your arm in alignment and then you would do dumbbell curls like this or preacher like this where there's a straight line a b c that's it hammer curls make a lot of sense too but we're talking the most simple basic shit right most effective way to train uh that's the pull that's the push romanian deadlifts or below the knee rack pulls for hamstrings because it hits the glutes it hits the lower back it hits the traps and then for quads i would say squats and or walking lunges if there's a safe way for you to do them um that's it you and you know look calves I mean, we're not going to address the little body parts for this point but for the best motions for beginners pull-ups bent row or t-bar row romanian deadlifts or below the knee rack pulls for the hamstrings squats for the quads some type of incline bench press for the chest dips and close grip bench press for the triceps some type of simple free weight curl whether it's barbell or dumbbell depending on your anatomy um, for the biceps and cable laterals for the delts if you can't obviously if you don't have a cable apparatus you could use um, uh, dumbbells and then go stand in a door frame and push the backs of your hands up against the door frame and work the delt in the stretch position against the door frame and try to open the door frame with your arms i could probably shoot a video of just that for someone who's more advanced i'm going to skip over the intermediate zone because the intermediate zone is transitioning from basic to advanced you know like i, I it's a very vague zone that 90 percent of you are going to fall under i know it's not terribly helpful none of you would consider yourself beginners none of you probably consider yourself advanced you all think you're intermediate so if you keep those core basic movements and add in these higher stimulus to fatigue ratio movements, these more efficient movements that are isolation movements, to the point where eventually you don't have enough volume to, add, to apply towards these heavy compound movements, you need to focus exclusively on bringing up weak body parts with these isolation movements. Now you're basically advanced. So the advanced end of the spectrum... Um, what I think I would be after 30 years and being a pro um, is cable laterals or reverse pack deck thumbs up. And I believe I have the video of both of those available for um, triceps. I like the Vulcan press down low or over my head high. And I believe I have a video for that on the YouTube channel as well for uh, that's for delts and for triceps quads i like leg extensions leg press smith squat and hack squat and i rotate basically that leg extensions are always involved because they work the muscle in an isolation for a compound lift depending on your anatomy and your goals either the smith squat the hack squat or the leg press might be right for you personally i feel what is most comfortable for me is the smith squat but i'm trying to currently working hack squat to isolate my quads better but it's a little bit harder on my knees you might find the same um, as far as the leg press for people with longer legs it's a better movement but for people with shorter legs the squat variants not the leg press is a better movement um, i happen to have short arms so 
the deadlifts and the bent row aren't as effective as I would have liked them to be. They were great for my glutes. They weren't great for my hamstrings or for my lats. So I've rotated those out in favor of chest supported rows for my lats, vertical chest supported things for my lats, pull ups for my lats. And I lift the pull ups in apparently. Um, but I use assisted pull ups so I can really work rep ranges rather than just hammering out shitty pull ups in the off season when I'm heavy. Even pre contest for the Texas Pro, I was doing negative 40 on the assist and I was getting really good squeezes and slow eccentrics on my pull ups. As far as, so there's no dumbbell rows right now. I think that that's a great movement, but you can get more out of a, ch a chest supported where you put your hand on it and row the machine. Um, as far as hamstrings, I really like seated leg curl or Nordic curl, but you may not want to do Nordic curl cold because you can tear. But yes, I, the lying leg curl, it ends up becoming so much weight that you're spending so much time trying to hold yourself down into the device that using two legs at a time is too much work. And it, I don't like having my face lower than my butt. All the blood rushes, rushes to my face. It's hard to breathe. I like the seated leg curl the best. And then the Nordic curl is my second favorite. For a closed chain movement, Nordic curl. For an open chain movement, seated leg curl. So I've covered the open chain leg extension and the closed chain squat variation. Um, that's the lower body pretty much. Calves, I like donkey calf or something where you're seating, sit, sitting where your lower back supported as if it's a donkey calf where basically ankle flexion and extension is the only thing your body's doing. That's the whole lower body. Adductor, abductor machines, the yes, no, good girl, bad girl machines, of course. You need to work your outer upper glute and you need to work your adductors to make your thigh gap go away when you're doing the front poses. Um, those are my favorites for legs. I already talked about back, chest supported rows and pull ups. Um, as far as biceps, I like stretch cable curls where your arms behind you in the fully stretched position and you contract up here. So the force is greatest at the midway or in the stretch position. And I like um, some type of one arm preacher variant so I can isolate the bicep that way. I find that I can go very heavy without being too much joint involvement with a preacher curl variant. Although I also, as a third favorite exercise, is simple standing dumbbell curls to the side. Um, so I think I basically hit most things. Chest, I like pec deck for getting the inner chest and getting a good stretch. So it's a stretch and contraction move without any power component. And then for a compound movement, I like incline Smith bench. That's pretty much it. If I had to nail, choose two exercises for my chest, I would say incline Smith bench and pec deck. That would be it. Um, if I had to do two exercises for my back, I would say some type of pull up variant. You can rotate them to get different parts of the back. And I would say a chest supported row, either one arm or two arm. That's pretty much it. And I know you're going to say, well, the back's like six different muscles. Right. So depending on if you're rowing here, rowing here, rowing here, rowing here, you're hitting different parts of the back. If you're pulling up here, pulling up here, pulling up here, pulling up here, different parts of the back. So you might do this and this one day, this and this another day. You've hit your lats and your upper back. Um, as far as lateral raises, like I said, the cable, so that tension's at the bottom, and then it's fighting you the whole way up. And then of course, here, tension's at the stretch position and at the contraction position. So it's unilateral tension the whole way through from stretch to contraction for thumbs up laterals. On the pec deck, you know, reverse pec deck thumbs up. When your arm's out in front of you or behind you and you come out this way, You've got greatest tension usually in the stretch position or in the almost contracted position, but the tension is easing up as you get to contracted position so that it matches the actual strength curve of the muscle. <sighs> Rear delts, you basically do the reverse pec deck the way the uh, manufacturers designed it. Not that fancy there. I talked about triceps was the Vulcan extension in those two positions. I still like um, dip machines, but we're talking about my, the absolute best movements. Um, if I guess if you counted that as one movement, then yes, then 
the third or in some cases second would be dip machine and that covers it crunches i like ball crunches i like the um the roller the ab wheel doing done correctly and that's a big caveat and hanging leg raise is done correctly basically once you know how to train abs you're going to be like oh my god i've been training them wrong my whole life then when you go through those three exercises the ab roller ball crunches and hanging leg raises you find that those will probably be the best dead bugs would be a nice solid four the reason why dead bugs is convenient is you don't need a gym to do it um and these i believe the the roller the hanging leg raise and the dead bugs are on the website that covers pretty much the whole body, I think. I hope I didn't forget anything. Um, there's certain machines I also incorporate because they help me hit upper pec better, anterior delt better for vertical pressing, um, a rhomboid. Some hammer strength machines, I can hit my rhomboids really good. Some hammer strength machines, I can get my upper traps really good. But they're basically presses, machine presses that are at some time. Hopefully you found this video helpful. It certainly wasn't brief, it was long as fuck, but it was a synopsis of the methodology and rationale for choosing exercises over the course of your career. And my favorite basic, my favorite advanced, and the, the blending of the two would be for intermediate individuals. Hopefully this was useful to you. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments or DM me. Also, if you would like coaching, Apex Coaching, Dot com, myapexcoaching.com. I believe there's a link in the bio. Also, for the best supplements on earth, don't forget Valhalla Labs. For the greatest supplements in Midgard or any of the nine realms at valhalla-labs.com. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed this video.